All right, remember these from that thrift haul? I don't know. I feel like I'm doing so many now. I don't know which ones are what. But I was so excited about these because they're just plain wooden corbels. And I was like, we can zhuzh these, these guys up. And I think it will be fun. So I went through my stash of stencils and just grabbed out this one because it had kind of like the Baroque feel to it. And it was small enough to fit on here. So here I just have a little bit of paint and I threw in some baking soda because I left my, the typical stuff that I use is a joint compound. It's like a quick set one. Um, and I left it at the shop. I'm working from home here. So I just added a bit of baking soda to some old paint that I had mixed up because this part doesn't really matter. It's gonna go underneath everything. But I just wanna make sure that the color is at least something I don't despise because if at any point it peeks through, I'd like to not be sad about it. So I'm just kind of applying this with a brush. Sometimes I use like a little paint scraper. In this case, I'm using just like a little card and I'm smoothing it out once I get it applied on there. It's kind of a pain because this isn't like the greatest quality stencil. This one's probably from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something like that. And so it's a little bit more flimsy than, you know, a typical furniture stencil. But because it's flimsy, it also bends really well. So, you know, pros and cons. So I'm just going to go through and fancy these up however I can. I wanted that big one there and then I'm adding the small one and then I will have to wait to add any more until after this dries so that I'm not smearing the stencil. And then I specifically got out these paints. I was going through my cabinet and realized that I hadn't used these in years. That's right, years. I have driftwood, truffle, and slate in the farmhouse finishes. This is a milk paint, but it already has the bond in it, so it's less likely to get crazy on you. Um, I have not used this. I think I've used slate on one other piece, a piece of furniture, and again, it's been years. So. To mix this up, I just am following the instructions. It's one-to-one. -one. Um, and then you can adjust as you see fit. But I was like, yeah, let's use this because if it does chip or do anything crazy, I'd like it to be on these corbels because I want them to look, you know, kind of old, Frenchy. That's that's the route that I'm taking with these things. So um, I'm actually mixing this up with chopsticks because, yeah, why not? So this is just going to be my base coat. I wanted it to be darker than the light wood coming through and I really love this driftwood. It's kind of like a dark grayish color. And that way when my top coat, not top coat, but you know, the uppermost layer of paint um, comes back, this will show through instead of the light wood, which is what I want. And you can see this paint runs a little bit thinner you can thicken it up if you like, but it's actually going on a bit like a stain in certain areas. So if you need two coats, you can do that or you can just let it be a stain, which is fine for what I'm using it for. Now I'm gonna go in with some clear coat. This is a gloss or semi-gloss, I can't quite remember, but it's pretty shiny, so it's probably a gloss. Um, and I'm just sealing this in so that it won't 
white back. It's also on raw wood, so the chance of it coming back is pretty low, but I'm sealing it in so that the next color that we use, which will also be a milk paint, um, can will come off of this. Now this is the color that I originally used on the furniture piece that I did with it. Um, I only need a small amount so I just put a little bit of powder in there and I'm using my Mr. Bottle to actually wet it instead of mixing. I'm like I don't even have, I could use a measuring spoon I guess but I'm not going to. <laughs> so I just mixed it up to the consistency that the driftwood was because I actually did mix that one up correctly. So uh, that's how I did this. You kind of want to let it sit for a minute. It'll help it thicken up also. Um, and I'm literally using a brush to mix it. <laughs> this is all kinds of wrong, but it's fine. You do what you want. It's your stuff. Anyways, now I'm going to get this on here. And I already love so much that color combination. I think it is just gorgeous. So I'm excited to kind of see where these head. I did do two coats of this um, and on the raw wood you can do two coats and it doesn't give you any trouble at all but on since this is now sealed and it's kind of a glossy sealer um, you just want to be a little bit careful doing your second coat and go very gently because it can pull up the paint because it gets reactivated um, I'm not terribly worried about it on these because I want this to be a very distressed look at the end Okay, once that dries, I'm actually going to go in with a damp cloth. You can see I'm just misting it with my water. And I'm literally just going to wet distress this back. So around edges, and then I want to make sure that I get over all of the raised stencil that we did because that's what I want to stand out. And then just any areas that I feel like it should have that driftwood peeking through, that's where I go with it. And I just think it looks so gorgeous. And this is literally the easiest thing to do ever it comes off so easily it was just lovely i did make sure that that dried quite a bit after wet distressing and i'm gonna go in with white wax and i think this would have looked great with dark wax or even clear wax i don't think it would have mattered i think it all looked wonderful um I think maybe next time I'll do a dark wax just to see what would happen. I mean, I know what would happen, but you know, see the color tones that happened. But yeah, so I'm getting this on here and then of course we'll let it sit for a minute and then wipe it back. And last but not least, I'm gonna hit this with some vintage gold gilding wax. So this I'm just kind of going on haphazardly. It doesn't need to be perfect. I don't want it perfect. Um, I'm trying my best just to hit the high points, but because ray stencils aren't terribly high, it will kind of get in the background. I'm fine with that if it gets too strong anywhere since it's already been waxed and the wax isn't cured yet. I can use a little cloth and wipe it back. Um, but yeah, so just kind of wherever I see fit. I want it to look like it's been there a long time and it's rubbed off in certain areas, so it's pretty easy to do with the 
white wax underneath. Again, it hasn't cured, so it moves very easily. Oh, hot. Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades, and we've got some finished corbels. So they look amazing. Very distressed, layered, but still glam, how I like to do things. Um, yeah, it was really fun using that paint. I It's just been sitting in my cabinet for, I mean, years. Haven't touched it. Kind of forgot about it. It's just been in the back. And I remember liking it when I used it the first time, but it's, uh, you know, a bit more finicky than your typical um, paint. So I was like, oh, well, since it's a little harder for me to do furniture right now, um, it'll be fun to play around with smalls and kind of use it on that. And yeah, I just, I love it. I think it, these turned out beautifully. I'm excited to list them and get them on the website and see what happens. Maybe they'll make it to market, who knows? But yeah, I highly recommend. And it was super fun to play around with stuff. So thanks for watching. Um, if you want them, they're on the website, elegant-upgrades.com. And if you don't, if you just need something to be inspired by, I hope that did the trick. So see you next time.